Hello, and thank you very much for tuning in. Now, this video is the next in my series on basic accounting concepts. Now, I just want to remind you that these videos are geared towards people that are new to accounting. So maybe a high school student or an undergraduate student or more likely just someone out in the general population that would like to know a little bit more about basic accounting ideas. So if you are working on your MBA somewhere, these videos are probably not for you. However, if you just want to get a basic overview of the fundamental concepts in accounting, then these videos should be for you. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. So this video is the third in my eventual four videos covering the four financial statements accountants prepare. So up to this point, I've covered the income statement and the retained earning statement. In this video, we will be talking about the balance sheet and inside that three subtopics. As you can see there, I have a little formula that is A equals L plus E. And that's one of the most important, if not the most important, formula in accounting. We're going to talk a little bit about what solvency is in terms of the balance sheet and this idea we hear all the time of net worth. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what is the balance sheet? Now, unlike the income statement or the retained earning statement, the balance sheet represents a snapshot or instance in time kind of like a camera's shutter. So you press the button on the camera, it clicks, and you capture that moment in time. The income statement and retained earnings statement is more like a video that captures the change in the financial condition over a longer period of time. Now what it does is it measures the financial condition of a business, or you can think of a household too, we'll talk about that, with respect to its total assets and the claims or rights to those assets. Now we will talk about these concepts in greater depth here in a few minutes, but just you know, in general realize that the balance sheet is a snapshot in time versus a change over time. And it's really about the total assets of a business and claims or rights to those assets. Now the way it works is it's sort of like a seesaw or a teeter-totter, depending on where you grew up, but it balances the business's assets against its liabilities and shareholder or owner equity. And of course, we're going to go into greater depth here in a minute about that idea. Then there is the idea of balance sheet solvency, and that is a measure of the current assets in relation to current liabilities. And again, I'll talk about that more here in a minute or two. And I'm sure you've heard of the idea of net worth. In a business setting, that's the same thing as the capital of a business. And that is whatever its assets are, less its liabilities. And get used to the word less if you're going to study more accounting. It's another way of saying minus. So assets, less its liabilities. Now remember in the intro, I mentioned that formula. A equals L plus E. So what exactly is that? Well, that is the fundamental accounting equation. And it's really the basis of so many things that we do in basic accounting. And what it stands for is assets equals liabilities plus owner or shareholder equity. You can also think of it this way. A business's assets equals the rights or claims to those assets. And I'm going to give you a really pertinent household example on how you can think about that equation. Okay, so I like to use real world sort of household personal examples to explain these business concepts because there's a lot of overlap in how we manage our household finances and how a business manages its finances. So let's look at these five examples. Number one. Let's say you borrow $100 from a friend or family member with the promise of paying it back in one month. Now, how does that relate to our equation up there at the top? So we borrow $100. So we now have $100 of cash 
and cash is a type of asset. However, we have to pay that back at some point. We promise to. So we also have a $100 liability. So you can see just the simple act of borrowing 100 bucks from someone in your family or a friend plays right into the fundamental accounting equation. $100 in assets on the left and a $100 liability on the right. Number two, and this one's a little bit more complicated. Let's say to buy a $20,000 car, you use $5,000 of your own money, like in your savings account, and you borrow the remaining $15,000 from a bank. So what happens there? Well, you use $5,000 of your own assets that gets transferred into the car. So that reduces the asset side of the equation to $15,000. You basically transferred one of your assets cash for another, which is part of the car. Now 20,000 minus 5,000 is 15,000, so you have $15,000 asset on the left. And now on the right hand side, you have a $15,000 liability, which is the loan from the bank. So that balances out. Number three, and this one's true by the way, because in high school I did work in a movie theater and this happened all the time, which was nice. So let's say you clean a movie theater while you're working in high school and often find money on the floor long after patrons have left the movie. So you go in after the movie and you, you know, clean the theater, the popcorn bags and the cups and stuff, and every once in a while you'll find like five or 10, sometimes even 20 bucks. And all the people were gone, they're long gone already. So you have that money. And of course you take it to the counter for a little bit in case anyone comes back um, or something like that. But usually you end up with that just surprise benefit. Anyway, so what happens there? Well, let's say you find five bucks. Well, you now have a new asset, $5, $5 cash. Now, because you found that just sort of out of sheer luck, you now have $5 more equity to your name. So you have $5 cash asset, $5 in equity. Number four, you take $1,000 of your own money and you buy 100 shares of Bank of America that's around $10. So how does this work in our equation? Well, again, this one's a bit different because in this one, we're only working on one side of the equation. We're taking $1,000 cash of our own assets, and we're just transferring that into 100 shares of Bank of America stock. So we take a $1,000 cash asset and turn it into 100 shares of Bank of America assets. So we don't even do anything on the right-hand side of the equation. And number five, and unfortunately, this is all too common nowadays, as I'm sure you all know. So let's say you borrow $200,000 to buy a house, and two years later, the economy collapses, and all of a sudden, your house is now worth $140,000. Well, you can see the problem here. On the left-hand side of the equation, you have a $140,000 house, and on the right-hand side, you probably have a liability or a loan to the bank of, you know, maybe $190,000 still or something like that. You have an asset that's $140,000. You have a liability that might be $190,000. And that's when we start talking about balance sheet solvency. And we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Okay, so this is our five examples set up in balance sheet form. So example number one, we have a personal loan and we have 100 in cash assets, but because we borrowed that money, we have $100 in liabilities. Now the car purchase. When on the asset side, we had a $20,000 car, but we turned 5,000 of our own cash and put that into the car. So 20,000 minus 5,000 is a $15,000 asset and our liability is now a $15,000 loan. Now, number three, we found the cash. So we 
found 20 bucks in the movie theater, that's a cash asset, and then that added $20 to our personal equity. Stock purchase. Again, all we did on the asset side was trade cash assets for stock ownership asset. So we just transacted on one side of the equation, which was completely fine. And then at the bottom, you can see the problem uh, example. We have a $140,000 house, and that's what it's valued at in terms of its asset value. But our liability is basically a $200,000 mortgage. That's a problem. So you can see each one of these transactions has some other transaction on the other side. Or we're just transferring one side of the equation into something else on the same side. Again, that changes nothing overall. We can do it that way too. So let's go ahead and look at a company's actual balance sheet. And this is the balance sheet from the Hershey company that makes all the candy bars and everything we love from the year that ended December 31st, 2006. And you'll notice they have three sections. They have an assets section, a liability section, and a stockholder's equity section. And we're going to pull this apart over the next couple of slides. But the important thing to notice is that the assets had a total of, you know, a little bit over $4.1 billion. And if you add up the liabilities and stockholder equity, that adds up to a little bit over $4.1 billion. They're the same. So the balance sheet balances out. So let's go ahead and take a brief look at each section, and then we'll wrap this video up. So here's the asset portion of that. Now, I'm not going to explain every single one, but, you know, cash is a type of asset, which we've already talked about. Accounts receivable, basically that's what businesses or whoever owes the Hershey company. So if a business is owed money by someone else, that is an asset. Of course, they have inventories of many, many chocolate bars sitting somewhere. And then maybe they have, um, of course they have, property, plant, and equipment they use to make all their candy bars and things like that. They may have certain patents on candy formulas. And of course, those do have a value. Those are an asset. And then there's always sort of an other category. So those are different kinds of assets. That list is not exhaustive, but that's those are fairly common ones that you will almost always see in a business's balance sheet. So here are liabilities. Now, what are accounts payable? Well, those are things that Hershey has to pay someone else. And then they have accrued liabilities, which are things they will have to take care of at some point. They have notes and other debt, and of course, income taxes. So those are liabilities. Those are obligations they have to someone else. Then we have stockholders equity. Of course, capital stock is the stock of Hershey company retained earnings. Because remember I said in the earnings statement, if the company does not pay out its earnings in dividends, it's gonna keep their earnings to use inside the company. And then repurchase stock, oftentimes companies will buy their own stock out of the, you know, the stock market. And they do that because maybe they think their stock is undervalued and they think it's cheap at the current moment. So they buy the stock and then when it goes up in price, they could put it back out into the market. Sometimes companies buy stock when it's uh, a little bit lower to fund their employee stock programs because a lot of executives are paid you know somewhat in stock so there are many reasons that you know companies do stock transactions and things like that so that is part of the stockholders equity part of the balance sheet so now if we go back we can see how it all lines up so if we were to write a equals l plus e it would balance out so we'd have Four billion one hundred and fifty-eight million on the asset side, and then we'd have four billion one hundred and fifty-eight million on the right-hand side, and that is by definition the balance sheet. So let's talk about this idea of insolvency. Now, when a company's assets are less than 
its liabilities. A company is said to be balance sheet insolvent. So if we were to sell all of a company's assets, if it was basically liquidated out in the market, the sale of all those assets would not cover all of their liabilities. So a good example of this is the upside down mortgage. The homeowner has a mortgage that is $200,000, but the house might be only worth $150,000. So even if they sold the house right now at its current value of $150,000, it would not cover the mortgage they took out because the asset, the house, is only worth $150,000, but the liability, the mortgage, is $200,000. And that is called balance sheet insolvency. Now that does not necessarily mean that the homeowner is not making their payments, okay? Those are not the same thing. But what's happening is they're, they're making mortgage payments on a $200,000 loan, but the house is only worth one fifty. So they could keep making the payments fine. It's just that in terms of the balance sheet, it's balance sheet insolvent. And on that note, I was just talking about, this is different than cash flow insolvency. So in the cash flow insolvency, the company, or maybe the individual even, has a lot of assets, but they cannot generate or convert those assets into cash quick enough to pay their bills. So this is also called a liquidity crisis or liquidity crunch, where the business or household has assets, but it's not in cash. It's not in readily available cash, so they can actually pay whatever bills they have to on an ongoing basis. So for example, let's say you complete work for a customer, but they are slow in making payment to you. Now you have the asset of account receivable. So if someone owes you $100, you have an account receivable asset of $100. But you need the cash to pay your ongoing obligations. So you have the asset, but it's not been converted into cash in a manner that you can pay a cash outflow. And that's different, okay? That's different than the balance sheet insolvency, whereas we were just talking about cash flow insolvency. Now, an important to note here that insolvency is not bankruptcy. So bankruptcy is a legal term, whereas solvency is an accounting term. You know, since a balance sheet is sort of a snapshot in time, if you catch that snapshot, at an odd time, the balance sheet could be sort of way out of whack. It just depends on when you take sort of the snapshot. You know, the, the balance sheet isn't the final credits of this business movie. All right, so let's review real quickly and then we'll be done. So just remember that the balance sheet is a snapshot in time, not about change over time. And it measures the financial condition of a business with respect to its assets and claims or rights to those assets. What we mean by that is, again, if a company gets into financial trouble, that whatever assets it has, and of course there are accounting rules um, and legal rules regarding this, but basically if it defaults on its debts or something like that, then those creditors have rights to the company's assets to get their, their money back. So that's what we mean by claims or rights to assets. And then we have the fundamental accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner equity or stockholder equity. Just commit that to memory, sear it into your brain, because it is, again, a fundamental part of basic accounting. Again, it balances assets against liabilities plus shareholder equity. And just a reminder that solvency is a measure of current assets in relation to its current liabilities. All right. And that is a quick run through the balance sheet. Again, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to talking to you again next time. <laughs>